at the first of each year or the last of uh, year, we go through the membership ro uh, roster and we look for members that have not uh, met all the requirements for membership. And at that point, we send out an email to each of those people asking them, you know, are you still interested in WCARES? Uh, and cause we don't want to lose a member, but if, if your interest is waned or something, then we're going to take you off the membership rolls. And then if you pick up again, then uh, you can, we can put you back on. But so he wanted me to talk a little bit about why we have these rules and everything. So, uh, I am not going to read all this, but in essence, it's just, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We're a public service organization. Uh, our served agency is the Williamson County EMA. Uh, that's why we exist. They have uh, invested a lot of money in WCARES over the years. Uh, we've been in existence since 1993, 94, something like that. So uh, y'all know the infrastructure we've got. Five, five link repeater systems, fusion repeater, DMR, two DMR repeaters. So, uh, they have a lot invested and they want us to do the best we can to support them in case we have an emergency or something like that. So, uh, that's, uh, that's what our goal is. Next one. Uh, we're here to serve the general public. If, uh, anything does happen in the county, they're going to require us to have a trained pool of amateur radio operators that know uh, how to operate nets or whatever is necessary for an emergency. Uh, we probably, locally, we probably wouldn't be deployed anywhere unless they had opened up some shelters. Red Cross or Weebs at EMA had opened up shelters. If that was the case, then we would be asked to go out, man the shelters for uh, communications. We did it during Katrina. There was some... Uh, Quite a few people moved into Williamson County from Louisiana. And so uh, we set up two shelters and we provided communications there for a few days because even here in Williamson County, the cell phones were overwhelmed. So we were, we were, uh, passing quite a bit of traffic between the two shelters and Red Cross also. So, uh, we just want to have a trained pool of people that are able to do that in case we're needed. So why do we have requirements? Okay. So there it is. We have a, a basically a, a skilled and experienced amateur radio operator for field admission of WCARES. Uh, so here's the requirements. A minimum of six RF phone nets per quarter. Uh, that's our Monday night nets. So six per quarter is uh, is pretty pretty lenient. Uh, participate in two WCARES or not one non-WCARES event each year. Field day, winter field day, those are the two, our two biggest ones, I guess. Uh, we were doing some bike rides and stuff like that, but uh, Harpeth River Ride, I don't even know if they're doing it anymore. If they are, they're not using us. Uh, we're going to do our best to try to get more involved in the, the public service area uh, in Williamson County and uh, possibly other counties that need us. I think, uh, Hoop, are you involved in the jack and back? Uh, John and I, or uh, Jeff, Schwartz and Jeff Schwartz and Paul, yeah. So they do the Jack and Back uh, uh, race every year. Uh, MS benefit. Yeah, MS benefit. And then we're looking at maybe going into Davidson County. They do a big marathon every year, so maybe we can assist them. So those are some events that would count towards your membership. That would be the uh, one non WCARES event. If you did something out of the area, that would qualify for that. Uh, your Tuesday morning breakfast and portable ops do not count. That's what we do for fun. Uh, we do count portable ops for, for a training for the public portable ops part of it, but it's not one of the membership requirements. And then a, a minimum requirement of six monthly meetings in a year. Uh, right now that would qualify via Zoom or in person. Uh, hopefully see more people in person, but if not able to, we'll have the Zoom meetings uh, continuing. Uh, when we WCARES originally organized, uh, it was a service organization, but we did not want to exclude anybody. Uh, if someone is not interested in the emergency communications aspect of ARIES, uh, that's not a reason not to be a member of WCARES. 
Uh, we have a lot of people, a lot of trained, experienced people in many aspects of ham radio, electronics, networking, whatever. And uh, we do not want to lose those people. When, when uh, the original group set up WCARES, it was to include everybody uh, to be a part of it. And so we do not want that to change. So if you're not interested in emergency communications, don't worry. Uh, you're not going to be kicked out or anything for that. We just want you to know that you are welcome and there will be a spot for you no matter what that is, uh, especially POTA. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, so with that, I mean, just real quick and dirty, uh, does anyone have any questions? There was a question from chat. Okay. Ribbon field day and regular field day consisting one tenth or two. two. That would be one for each. You might repeat the question. Oh, Zoom audience. Okay, Zoom. Uh, Jack was asking, does Winter Field Day and the Field Day in June count as one event or two? And that would be two separate events. So if you did both of those, that would meet your requirements. Anything else? If anybody does have any questions about this, uh, again, Jeff is our EC this year. You can. Uh, please contact him or myself or Ed or any of the ones that have been around and, and we'll help you because, again, we don't want to lose anybody. So please, uh, and pass the word. Also, also, on the back table, I have put out some uh, ARL uh, pamphlets about membership for ARL. We are an ARL-sponsored event. We have never required anybody to be an ARL member, but if you are not and you're interested, there's some brochures back there that you can take one of. 